Okay, so um, a little update on our research and development with our magnet motors. Uh, this is the original version. We're just waiting for our bench here so we can cut all the laminates. We've got to put in these two and uh, have the rotors somewhere. I don't know where they went, but I've filed them in a safe place. Uh, this one here was a, another design that I've uh, printed up, made and tested. That flywheel goes with it and all these different size fingers also go with that set up there. Um, still got to do a bit more on that. Looking promising but we found an effect with this one that I wasn't expecting but uh, after seeing it and working out what was going on um, it became uh, quite obvious why it was doing what it was doing so um, all different rotors I've been making up uh, these have got big 18 mil neo magnets in them this is a um, electric version of the other one I was uh, that I made up a long time ago uh, as you can see, we've got two coils there and another one there. This makes a waveform like I've never seen before. So we're going to have a look at that a little later on. I'll do a bit more on that. Um, so uh, electric version of the uh, magnet motor. Um, but uh, getting on with my latest version there's a uh, problem that a lot of people are coming across or some that are actually building it so I'm going to show you how to alleviate that problem and that is a sticky spot between the changeover of um, south to north so I'll get the camera set up and we'll have a look at that and I'll show you exactly how to alleviate that problem uh, took a while and many prints to work out how to do it but I found a very easy way to do it, so it may help a lot of people out there that are following on and uh, having a go at this. So uh, we'll get set up and come and have a look at that. Okay, so um, this is for those uh, having a go at the twin rotor uh, version of the magnet motor. And um, the basic principle behind this one is we have two rotors like so and these are um, just steel or mild steel uh, what would you call them blocks pins whatever um, I just cut out of a bit of rod and of course there's eight of them on each rotor which makes it 45 degrees each and our magnets will continue around from center 45 degrees from center 45 degrees and we have a second one that the second rotor <clears throat> sits on which will be like that uh, and this is all one pole and this is a split pole so the idea is that when we have these on here like so um, this pin here is going to carry the field of the magnets that it's sitting on so that be carrying a north field and now the one on the other road will be carrying a south field um, so the two will be attracted to each other and pull in to the center when it passes the center <clears throat> this one then becomes a south field and this one remains a south field and they would push away from each other so we basically have the force of the steel keeper pulling into the magnets like so um, and then also the attractive force of the two is also causing rotation and then it gets to this center point where it's got to change polarities um, and it will get past that these two pins will start repelling each other and it has to be enough to break away from the magnets as well 
So when this one's trying to break away, we're going to have another one at centre at the crossover point and another one being pulled in all at the same time. So the biggest problem has been this sticky spot in the middle, as you can see. It's extremely strong. Like you can see, very, very, very strong. Enough to turn the timber almost. But uh, that's been the problem. <clears throat> so after much mucking around and printing, I tried all different sorts of things. Uh, putting another magnets behind it of opposite poles and all that sort of stuff, but uh, it didn't really work. A little success um, when I removed. I spread these two out and put a steel keeper in, but that then still carrying both fields and wants to stick to the steel keeper pretty hard. So that's a big issue, and that's what's stopping this version of the motor from working. So we needed to uh, get rid of that. So I'll get set up and I'll show you how we did that. So all north, change over to all south. So I'll show you how you get rid of that sticky point in the middle almost entirely. Okay, so we've got our second stator in and it took uh, probably two three days of mucking around and printing to um because of course there's a whole box of stuff down there test rigs and jigs and all that that are printed up but um we've actually found the best way to do this most economical way and the easiest way as well so uh as you can see there no more sticky point in the middle or should i say we've alleviated 95% of it it's just just not there anymore so how did we do that that's the problem we were having that was stopping this motor from working and um, we needed to get rid of that sticky point because that was the killer and it now gone so um, how did we do it and we did it quite easily in the end As you can see, <clears throat> we have all our north there, all our south there, and we have one on its edge. Whereas the south side is sitting against this north magnet, and the north side is sitting against this south magnet. So what that's done at the crossover point, it's pulled the two fields in extremely close, um, and they don't actually reach our little steel core here. So I've got about a 2 mil gap between this core and the magnets and um, it is all but gone. It's just, um, you can only just feel like and if I hold it steady enough I can get it to stay at that sticky point. But it's about um, only 5% of what we had before and I would feel if I move this out another mil it will be gone altogether. But um, that's where we're at. Extremely smooth now, and I'm extremely happy with that. So, no more sticky point in the middle. So we now have the action of this block or core being pulled into the magnets. That's going to add energy to our flywheel. That energy, of course, is going to be lost pulling the magnet out or pulling the core away from the magnets. So, equal and opposites there. The other action that happens is this core here, now carrying that north field, and the other core on the other rotor carrying the south field are going to be attracted towards each other and they're going to pull it towards the centre. So with the other setup, that's where we lost everything, is the big cog or sticky point in the centre, but that's now gone. And of course once it passes centre, this now becomes a south field, the pin on the other rotor, or the core on the other rotor is a south field, and they want to push away. So there's no more loss in the middle, it's uh, 
almost gone. So that's how it's done, <coughs> the easy way. Um, I do have a core here, so I basically put this in the centre and made it 5mm deep because my magnets are 10mm wide, 5mm thick. So it goes in there, 5mm sticks out, 5mm, which makes it exactly even with the other magnets when they're all glued on. But uh, that is our sticky point gone. And a very easy way to do it, like I say, you keep hunting. And uh, for things, you will find an easy way to do it. So uh, before I was using laminated blocks in between to try and pull the fields in, it was somewhat successful. I would say I probably got rid of 50% maybe of that sticky point. But this, doing it this way, after many days of trial and error, is... The way to go oh ceramic hybrid bearings these things spin so easy even with the seals on them so, very smooth <clears throat> and like i said we've only got one in here for testing purposes but uh this is going to take eight of those so when one's pulling in the other one's pulling out and they'll always be the two attracting and the two opposing which uh, should achieve what we want to do uh, is what I will say at this point in time about this little motor and if it works like this it's going to be extremely simple uh, there may be another way of doing it also which I'm also looking into which makes it even simpler but um, you do need the two rotors just have one set of fixed magnets here because um, it's the two steel pins being attracted on the two rotors to the center and then being repelled <coughs> from the center that gives us our motive force all right guys so um, that's my update <coughs> so far I have been on three weeks holiday and then when I got home we had uh, oddly enough two tornadoes <clears throat> one while we were on holiday and one when we got home and that knocked the power out for a total of um, six days and it went out halfway through a big print of course as it does but we've also alleviated that problem as well now so um, regardless of whether the power stays on or goes off the printer will keep printing thanks to a nice UPS <clears throat> this one here <coughs> excuse me as I said gives out the weirdest waveform and we'll have a look at that at a later date but um, as far as the electric version goes that is probably going to be the design I'm going to use because let's just say that's the one that works the best uh, I do have to reprint this because I've made the tolerances a bit close also, that's with steel bearings, not our hybrid ceramics, so, uh, and it's noisy because we're using straight cut gears here. But um, as you can see, we've now gone into helical, so uh, that's um, quietening down our gear problem and made the and the new printers um, made me able to print at a lot closer tolerances than the old gear, and that also helps. So. Uh, that is my update so far. Uh, we will have a look at this one as well. These uh, big steel curved cores go with this one, along with this flywheel, um, and they bolt on the side. So, uh, but there's a hidden problem, uh, which we found with this, unexpected. Um, but it was well worth doing because now I know the effect. I can remove that effect with this version. So it's all trial and error, research, development. I have gone through about 16 rolls of filament so far on the new printer because uh, there's another full box which I've chucked upstairs. It was getting a bit crowded in here. I've printed parts. 
for testing purposes but uh yeah so far so good we are gaining ground quite rapidly because each experiment and each configuration i try shows me a different problem which i can alleviate in the next one like with the crossover point uh, so that's where we're at um, and we are going well considering i've only had about five days on this project this month due to holidays power outages and the likes so uh, all this is been done except for those two all this has been done and that within the last five or six days all right i will keep you up to date as i can <clears throat> but uh we are definitely gaining ground here